All right, got the fuel lines in last night. Um, pressure tested and leak checked. Um, we're good to go. So the fuel lines um, are this white uh, nylon material. And then also there's this sleeve material that's the same, that's the same but larger so that um, it can slide inside. Um, and then there's also this protective sheathing that goes, this anti-chafe. And it's kind of cool because you can see it's split so that you can install this after the fuel lines. Um, unlike a conduit where you'd have to get it all in and run, run it inside there. So that's pretty handy. So we just followed the diagram and the instructions in here. And then also I'm in Washington. So I was lucky enough to go to Cub Crafters and take pictures on the assembly line to compare them because there's some cases here where lines cross and things go and it's kind of hard to tell what side of the tube they go on. But uh, I'll show you what I did. Um, like I said, I'm not a pro, but it worked out for me. And Cub Crafters has been great. I uh, emailed them some questions and some pictures and have got back to me instantly. Uh, yeah, so we're onto the fuel system now. Um, jumped over from doing the wings. I'm waiting on a couple of rivets. I think those will show up today so I can finish up the, uh, the clips on the ends here, on the, excuse me, on the, um, the, the aileron and flap ribs and the nose ribs and then we can start finish up the wings i think we'll get the wings done this weekend anyway uh here i'll, I'll work you through the whole fuel system here um starting at the fuel selector uh this line's pretty simple it just goes up to the left left front tank here i have it really long and you can see there's the white fuel line in the sheathing and then um anywhere that it crosses the, the anywhere where it's attached or crosses anything uh um I ended up putting the thicker sleeve on there. So I used about twice as much sleeve as they give you. I went a little overkill, but um, my biggest concern in aviation is actually in-flight fire. So um, this stuff's like 50 cents a foot. So my airplane might be a little heavier because it's got some extra uh, anti-chafe on it, but I did that everywhere. And then also we have the friction tape anywhere where it's attached. So um, yeah, so the fuel selector here is kind of your main control. And out of the bottom of the fuel selector, it goes down to the, this, this line will end up going to the carburetor, to the fuel system and the engine. Um, so yeah, we had the, the left front tank come down into here, and then we have a T coming off of that down to this, this line, and this will go to a low point drain. And that is to drain any water or sediment out of the fuel. The contaminants in aviation fuel are heavier than the fuel, so they're gonna go to the lowest point. So we have to make sure when we ran these lines that they are um, slow, gradually sloping um, in a direction it won't have any dips to collect any water or sediment and you can see throughout the lines you, I kind of paid pretty close attention to that first time builder so I probably went a, a little overkill on that but a second line coming out comes out of the fuel selector and this is going to go to the right tank goes to this T and this T will lead back to the back of the airplane to a drain but this is where the fuel line comes in and wraps around the front. You can see I have these standoffs here, and these, these are just actually uh, extra fuel line, and you run a zip tie through it and wrap it around, and it, it creates a nice rigid uh, standoff so I can have that slope I was telling you about. Goes inside um, the firewall here, uh, and then below here, and up the, I guess what I'd call an A pillar in a car, to the right tank. Um, a lot of extra here, because I'm not sure how much I'll need later. Um, I can always cut some off. Again, um, sleeving anywhere where it's zip tied or it's gonna cross a complex curve or anywhere where it could um, potentially rub through. Um, on the instructions, the pictures show the fuel line kind of coming up right through here. And um, right here, it, these two tabs, are, that's where the ele electronic ignition goes. So I held this back here for now. Um, and then the panel sits right here too. The, I'll show you, the panels, that's what a raw panel looks like. Uh, my panel is being made by Cub Crafters with the avionics already in it, but it's great that they supplied that because I used it to mock up um, to mock up on here. And it looks to me like the fuel lines and everything's going to clear right where it's at, but this is zip-tied, so I can move it easily if I want to. Anyway, there's the right tank going down to the fuel selector. We have the left tank going down to the fuel selector. And both of those, left tank, low point drain, right tank, T to the low point drain, and I just did the same thing. I didn't want any dips. I wanted it nice and clean. Um, run it through the stringer here. I did another standoff here because this is a long distance and I thought it, could, might, it might sag right here. Um, and then my 90 down to the low point drain in the rear of the airplane. 
and you can see the, uh, uh, the, the fuel sump there at the bottom. Um, and then on the right rear tank, excuse me, left rear tank, this is really long. Um, the pictures I saw at the factory, it was, they had it run sticking out here and then uh, in front of this tube, and then it's gonna go down inside the tubes, transition to inside the tubes, zip tied to this carbon fiber panel here, down through this notch in the stringer, and that also tees into that low point drain we showed you earlier. And then we just have one more. So that's uh, both fuel lines on the left tank. And then the right tank we have that's its rear fuel line as well. Again, extra long. Um, zip tied friction tape and doubled. This one transfers inside the fuselage parallel. I'll try to make it as clean as I can. Through that custom notch in the baggage compartment, I zip tied it here and I've seen people run them down through here and then around. I was a little concerned about um, how much pressure that was gonna put on this nylon fitting to try to kind of double bend it, not just up, but around. So I actually ran mine inside the stringer and came out, there's another hole here and zip tied it here. And then I just have a more gradual, maybe less of a bind right here. And then the, of course the double tube, friction tape, anti-chafe and zip tied there. So that's how I did my fuel system. Um, I hope that helps anybody that's thinking about building one of these to see what that kind of looks like. All right, on to the next thing.